you hear are the sounds of leaves rustling in the, mount the Himalayan mountains so we're going to let the wind do its job but I'd also like to welcome you to Yoga Express your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind my name is Banu Suresh I'm your host for today and for this program today we have back with us for amazing demonstration and an introduction to a very new wellness technique. Well, new to our show. It's not new to society, but it's new to our show. A wellness technique through hypnosis. We have Mona Chopra, who is a licensed acupuncturist, who is back with us. You watched Mona a few episodes ago, several episodes ago, and she promised to come back. She is good, good to her promise, and she's back with us. Mona, welcome back to the show it's lovely to have you it was a very memorable experience the last time we loved having you there and i think people are still talking about it oh. so welcome back to the show i know you are we enjoyed having you i know you're not uh, exactly feeling too well today you know what we loved about what your re response you were not feeling well, you were under the weather, but you still decided you were going to be here. And mm -hmm. I love that. I love the fact that you did not have an attitude about it. You were just willing to give it a try, so thank you for coming back. Oh. Welcome <laughs> back. You. And you're going to take us through a unique phase in our show, through some hypnosis procedures. So before you take me to that level, <laughs> I better get all my introductions out of the okay. way. We have Lana Parr on our show. Lana is very new to the show, and I understand possibly even new to yoga, Lana? Yes. Do you, have you heard about uh, the different benefits of yoga? You might have watched I, other I people. Have, you yes. have. In, in various places, you know. I've never participated myself. You've never participated. So I'm very we happy actually, to be here. I dra I'm glad I drafted you in, because <laughs> that's very sporting of you. I'm glad you decided to join us, because we, we saw Lana Lana is our director's friend, Josiane Her. Josiane is holding the fort for us today, flying solo. Josiane, thank you so much for directing our show. Hopefully you'll be with us for the next, I don't know, 1,000 episodes, as long as we're around. Josiane introduced Lana to me, and I said, Lana, why don't you, we have this amazing special guest, why don't you come stretch with us? And Lana sportingly agreed. So, Lana, I have, I'm sure you might have taken part in other wellness processes or other wellness sports or activities, have you? Uh, just physical therapy. Actually. Physical therapy, right. Okay. Well, you are you undergoing any physical therapy treatment right now? Not at the moment. No. Not at the moment. Try to do it at home. Okay. Well, that's, you know, that's a good good thing you just mentioned that because for those of you who are stretching at home with us, if you come on the show, we will give you a copy of my third title, Yoga Secrets, and I'm going to hold this up for Josiane. Yoga Secrets has two plus eight ailment-specific cards inside. So when I say ailment-specific, basically these are cards that which Lana has not had a chance to open it, so you'll now see what it is. There are eight cards over here, and each card has got about 20 postures that actually target different regions of the body. So if you want to energize your knees today, you would do knee benders, postures that are good to help prevent or delay arthritis. You want to do chest openers, you would use the card, yes, Josiane, even though my head is cut off, I'm going to have uh, Josiane focus on the cards. So if you want to do postures that open up your chest muscles, your pectorals, and enhance your lung power, we have a card for that to help prevent or delay asthma. So we are trying to be as ailment specific as we can because we firmly believe that if your body is in good shape, you are ready to take yourself to higher levels. Your mind actually does control your body, but it's not strong enough unless your body is strong. So please stay with us, stretch with us, and 
to get back to Mona. Mona, what do you have planned for us today? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, Mona, when you ask me to come and um, speak about hypnosis, I always first like to just find out, like, from you, what is in your mind when you say hypnosis? Because there's a lot of misconceptions out there, or a lot of ideas out there of what hypnosis is. Right. So I first like to kind of gather what is actually in your mind, thinking about it, and then kind of go into it. To me, Hypnosis is probably taking me to a state where I don't have to worry about all the mistakes I made in life. <laughs> Getting rid of all the negativity in me, so just helping me feel good. Yeah. Am I on the right track? You are absolutely <laughs> on the right track. I always like to ask that because sometimes people have a, an idea that, that um, you know, you're going to go into this state where you won't remember anything and you're going to bark like a dog and <laughs> you'll act like a chicken and all of that. And that's, you know, that's kind of stage hypnosis. That's not really the kind of therapeutic, right. hypnotic work that I do. Um, so I always like to just for people to get that in, right. um, and a, that idea out of their mind um, to begin with. Um, and it's, I, I really like your the tagline, I think, of the moving program the body here, moving the body the to still the mind. So that's so wonderful, and I look at hypnosis as a way of using the mind to affect the mind and the body as well. Um, so first, what I thought I would uh, so let me just ask you: Is have you ever have you ever been hypnotized? You've been a hypnotic no. state. Okay, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, so then my next question for you is: Have you ever um, have you ever watched a movie? Yes, I've watched movies. You know, sometimes you have these movies about cops. Um, I think it's NYPD. I'm not sure which one. We're not allowed to even mention commercial channels. Okay. But there are shows where they talk about hypnotizing the, uh, not the client, but the victim or whoever, the suspect, right. into admitting something. Right. Right, right, right. Stuff like that. But, you know, okay. that's all TV knowledge. Right. <laughs> okay. But I was just wondering, actually, if just any movie, nothing to do with hypnosis, but just, of course, you've watched, I'm sure you've watched movies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. So the reason I was asking that is because um, whether we know it or not, actually, we are constantly going in and out of hypnotic states throughout our day. Oh, when we watch the movie? So to give you an example, uh, well, first, let me just backtrack and say a basic definition of hypnosis is being in a state of um, where you're highly suggestible. That is how people use hypnosis to get over phobias, to get over anxiety, to um, stop pain, all kinds of things. Is Basically, you're getting a person into a state where you're highly suggestible. So um, Let me clarify. Let me ask you for a clarification. Sure. When you say suggestible, can you explain that? Sure. What I just mean is that suggestions can be made to a person in that state and the person is much more of the the system as receptive. a whole is much more likely exactly receptive much more likely to accept those suggestions so suggestible made. would be the positive equivalent of being vulnerable that's a very good very way. Positive way of yes and I'm glad you mentioned the word vulnerable because again just to kind of I, I like to kind of counteract some of the myths around hypnosis you know some people when I've told them you know a dinner party like oh and I do hypnosis like oh okay I'm yeah. not scared. <laughs> but uh, actually you know the truth is all hypnosis really is self hypnosis so someone really cannot make you do something that the system as a whole would not want to do so I mean, that is my contention. That's the contention of um, the teacher that I studied with is pretty much, you know, all maybe I would say 99%. Okay, maybe there's something else that can happen in a certain other brain state. But pretty much all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And so basically what it is is it's like if, if we were sitting in a car, you, as the person who's being hypnotized, you are actually in the driver's seat. I am just in the back seat giving you the instructions. But it, You're navigating. Yeah. I'm navigating. Navigate. I'm telling you, make a left here because I know because I've had some experiences. But if you should shut down and decide you don't want to do it, you know you can't actually force someone to be right. hypnotized. So just in that same way, you are actually in the driver's seat. So I always like to say, um, as my teacher Melissa Tears, who I want to give props to because she's an amazing woman who I studied with here in Melissa, New York. Melissa, you're welcome to stretch with us too one of these days. <laughs> 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 MelissaTears.com. Um, she you knows she 
she always says uh, it's an inside job. So really all hypnosis or most hypnosis is self-hypnosis, it's an inside job. So the person does need to be willing and receptive at, at a very basic level to be open to the process. Reminds me of was it, uh, William Carlyle, a Victorian author, who said willing suspension of disbelief, that expression. Yes. So you are suggesting exactly. to us to take ourselves through certain stages, That's but you're right. prompting us. Exactly. It's willing suspension. That's perfect. So to go back to the movie metaphor, so what happens when you go to see a movie? <clears throat> so you walk into that movie theater, and the first thing you do, you kind of narrow your focus onto the screen. Right. Right? You kind of relax into the chair, so you're getting into a relaxed state, and you have a focused awareness and attention there. And then the movie begins. And we all know if it's a good movie, um, what happens is we get, we might use what we get absorbed into it. So basically, you know, when the writers, the directors, the producers, when they want us to jump, we jump. Right. If they want us to cry, we cry, especially if it's a really good movie. So what, what happens that allows us to suspend disbelief? What happens that allows us to forget for the moment that this is actually just actors? Just right. I mean, we're not right. stupid. You know, we know they're actors, that's a lighting door, and the whole time we would just be sitting there thinking that we couldn't emotionally get involved and literally have physical reactions like cry, have our heart beat, sweat. I'm sure we've all, if we've yeah. seen a really good movie, we've gotten yeah. into that state. Right. By watching these images on a screen. Right. And so the idea of what's happening there is, um, if we imagine like this is our mind, so if we just imagine this is our mind, it's really 90 to 95% of it that is this realm of the unconscious, subconscious and unconscious, and it's really only 5 to 10% that is our conscious mind. And between these two realms, there is something known as a critical factor. And so what happens when we go into this willing state of suspended disbelief, as you said, is that we just temporarily suspend that critical factor and that allows messages to enter into that oh, unconscious. That's a nice so analogy. We are, <laughs> so we are just, you know, temporarily allowing that critical factor of the mind to be, you know, suspended to just open up that space between the conscious and unconscious mind. Right. And in that, in that scenario, so, I, I almost want to say anything is possible. Because if you can imagine 90% of our habits, of the emotions, of our reactions to things, of what we believe about ourselves, about how we interact with others, is really coming from this unconscious. I'm going to come to your chamber. I want you to hypnotize me into doing the headstand again. <laughs> I've done it before, but for some reason, reason there's this fear of falling ah. as I grow older. That fear that standing, you talked about opening the passage, yes. that's what's standing in my way. That's so I think I'm, I'm going to come to your chamber. No, that's a great... Actually, yes, if it is fear, I mean... Because I've done it. Know. I know my body can yes. do it, but now I'm terrified of doing it because I fell at a gym once. I was trying to invent a new way to do the headstand. Right. I fell, hurt my back, and I was on all fours for four days, so that scared me. And as we grow older, you're more worried about hurting oh, yes. ourselves. That's Kids right. don't have that fear, but let me not That's stop right. your No, flow. and we could maybe even do like a little demo related to that in the future I'm episode. Sure, of course, we would <laughs> love that. See how the time is. Um, so, yeah, so I always like to first just explain like what are we actually doing so when you go into a hypnotic state um, with knowingly or unknowingly so what my contention is when we watch a movie that's already a level of hypnotic state all day long the di our inner dialogue what are we telling ourselves that is some level of trance what are we telling ourselves that are giving us the beliefs that we have that is some level of trance so why not instead of unconsciously just saying things oh I can't do this and she's better than me and whatever it is I'm sick why not give messages that are positive that are going right. to take us to where we really want to go you hypnotized yourself into coming here today. I did <laughs> how did you know I said I'm going to stop saying I'm sick so well, that's right. That's right. I did actually. The mind is so powerful. Can as you we do know. that self hypnosis? Yes. Oh, that's right. You yes. were just saying we do that. Well, we can't. Yes. I mean, I was saying all hypnosis, self hypnosis, and right, that right. you can be guided by someone. But also, what I really do in my practice is teach people tools for them to do it on their own on a daily basis. Because with some of these things, you want to repeat it, and it just maybe takes ten or twenty minutes a day. But it's like you want to. We've spent so much time doing the other thing being fearful 
being anxious, right, all having knee pain, stuff, yeah. all that stuff. So, you know, taking, interrupting that pattern and taking this t focused time in the day, you know, you kind of need to do it on a somewhat regular basis right. to um, make the changes more lasting. Yeah, oh, I love that. You're relaxed as well, don't you? Exactly. So really the components are like getting someone into just a very relaxed state. And it may seem very familiar to just doing a deep meditation, being right. the progressive relaxation, the ways of getting someone to a relaxed state, and then choosing the focus, just like in yoga, talking about you choose your focus, focused awareness, and then in that state, it's like you get to choose the movie. What movie do you want to create? What images do you want to see? So, wow. um, and, uh, and we have that much control over our lives. It's amazing. You know, of course, in my, you know, my personal belief, of course, in the end of the day, it's like there's things out of our control, right? In the universe, there's things we cannot control, but we have so much more control than we believe we do. Right. We think we're a victim to our fears and our habits, and I'm this way, and I'm the person who's shy, and every time we say it we're grooving that neural pattern in our brain that's saying I'm shy or I am you know the afraid. person who gets sick all the time I am afraid we're, we're grooving that deeper and in hypnosis you are beginning to create new neural networks uh -huh. and it is uh, it's fascinating Banu there's so much research now coming out from the field of neuroscience about this idea of neuroplasticity and that we actually can change our brain even the most deep deeply ingrained patterns can be changed. That so you're suggesting hypnosis can help us rewire our brain. Exactly. Really? Exactly. I like that. I yeah. like that. There's hope for me. Yeah. That's right. There's a saying some of the neuroscientists like to say, you know, neurons or cells that oh. fire together, wire together. So it's like anxious, we're gonna it's just like building it building it stronger and stronger and stronger. All that those anxious neurons right. and every time we do that it builds that it's sort of like a bully on the block as one of the teachers um, has called it and so here it's like creating a fresh alternative doing something different and you begin to create a new avenue and then every single time you interrupt yourself from that anxiety pattern or from that fearful thought pattern that just kind of runs away every time you interrupt it you kind of groove that one deeper and give yourself this other um, alternative it's a kind of, I, I can just see it as a kind of a very self-liberating experience because you're really releasing any negative emotions. Yes. I mean, I, I see myself, oh, I see myself making good use of that. Yes. <laughs> I hope I learn how to do that. Yes. Are and we doing a demo today? Um, sure, we can definitely do a demo Would today. Would you? Yes. Would you um, like to be? So, oh, no, sorry, I, go. No, that's okay. When done. I had an, I, I, I thought an I, idea, because I know I'll be coming back. Yes. Um, we can't let you go that <laughs> <laughs> That I thought maybe I would just start with a demonstration that both of, we can all participate okay. in. Sure. That, um, Are you good with that, Lana? Yeah. You ready to be hypnotized? Let's go to another yeah. world, right? <laughs> so this okay. is simply a demonstration. I'll call it a pre-hypnotic exercise to, okay. to make a point. Hey, we're something. ready. <laughs> but I will be able to get back to the show. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm okay. not going to be zoned out somewhere. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll all just right. have, I, I think it'll work if we all just stand up. Okay. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. And can Oh, you're still on camera, but we can take our time. That's okay. Well, and mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. No, yeah. stop. don't even apologize. That's fine. And we've been sitting a Do while, so that's all right. Like stable okay. standing on it. Would you like a chair next to you? No, I think Well, Mona, get started. I'll bring a chair anyway. I'll be right back. Just okay. Please get started. The height, you know, getting up. Yes, no problem. But go ahead, Josiane, keep going. I notice when I get sit started. on a chair now, you know, I, I, I have to come like this to get up. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's okay. And it's only been the last year. You know, okay. So. Well, I think she's getting a chair, so that and this this demonstration can be done with a chair. It can be done standing up. So either way is this um, is very exciting. <laughs> totally okay. I'll keep this between the two of us, so I may need it too. I don't know where Mona is going to take okay, me. Okay, you will not need it. No, <laughs> not for this anyway. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Mona. Nice. We're all yours. Okay. <laughs> so, Don't be. Stay there. Um, so just want you to start, whether you're okay. standing or um, sitting. Just your arm. Have your arms dangling at your sides. Stand. Okay. Please. 
e either is okay. Yeah, either is okay. Arms by the side. Arms at okay. by the sides. And um, I'll just, is it okay if I'll just yeah. face this way? But you don't want to show too much of your back. Okay, so I'll just be like We'll, we'll watch you, yeah. Okay, well, I can even stand here. So what I just want you to do is look where you are in space and simply take your right arm, raise it up in front of you, and then I want you to twist around and just go as far as you can go. Go to your maximum. So go as far as you can twist and then take a snapshot right now where you've gone. So you could, might look at those triangles of light and see exactly where you are in space. And make a mental note of that really clearly and then come unravel yourself, come back around. And then lower your arm down. Okay, and now go ahead and close your eyes. So make sure you feel steady standing up with your eyes closed. And now, just in your mind's eye, so you're not doing anything with your body just yet, just in your mind's eye, I want you to raise that right arm up out in front of you just as you had before. And just in your mind's eye, Lana, so you're not actually raising the arm up, so you're just imagining, oh, that's okay, you're just visualizing that right arm floating right up in front of you and then twisting yourself around, twisting yourself around. And this time, I want you to see yourself going even farther than you had gone that first time. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So see yourself, you know, maybe you're all the way to where the black curtain is in your mind's eye. So you're doing this with your eyes closed and you're just imagining it. And then once you really get a snapshot of how far you've gone this time, I want you to unravel yourself, unravel, 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 unravel until that right arm is right out in front of you and then lower it down. Okay. So now for a second time in your mind's eye, I want you to take that right arm up out in front of you. And Lana, you can just do this with your eyes closed. And you don't have to actually move your arm, but you're just visualizing, oh, imagining it. That's okay. And then this time I want you to twist around and go even farther than you had gone that last time. So twist around, twist around, twist around, and I want you to see yourself go maybe even where the, the booth is there, like really far. And just really see it clearly in your mind's eye how far you've twisted around. And then I want you to now unravel yourself, untwist, 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 untwist until that right arm is right out in front of you. And then lower it down. Okay, now for a third time, just in your mind's eye again, so still visualizing this, I want you to take that right arm up right in front of you and twist around, and this time I want you to keep going. So twist around, doing 360s. You might imagine yourself as a cartoon character who's just twisting around and around like the Jetsons. There's no stop to it, around and around. And then going the opposite way back, around and around and around, limitless possibilities. And then unravel, 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 and twist yourself until you come all the way back around until that right arm is right out in front of you. And then lower it down. Okay, so now open your eyes, and now, with your body, take that right arm up out in front of you, and twist around, twist around, twist around, and just go as far as you can go without, you know, no limits to it, and just notice where you are now, and come back around. What did you notice? I did go deeper. Okay, you I did, did go, go a little farther. deeper. I couldn't do the Jetsons twirl, but okay, I did no. go deeper. <laughs> right. Yeah, I felt I went back a little further. Further than yes. last time. And you both did go back. I saw you both where you right. were, and you did. So this is an exercise I love to do, just to show you that in this little five minutes, with something that pretty much you have no emotional investment in, like. Who cares if you go farther? Right. You didn't right. care. You didn't quite know what we were doing here. 
even just that, the idea is if you give your unconscious a suggestion at least three times, it begins to take it as a direct command. So even in this simple little exercise, just visualizing yourself doing something in a particular way yielded a result. It could be subtle, it could be dramatic. So um, this is just another way of opening up the mind to realizing its own power. Right. I can just see, I can see myself taking my participants through all those stretches to the deepest level. Yes. Just using your technique. I can see yes. you do that. You yeah. could probably yes. take people right into the deepest postures. Sure. Is that how you were planning to take me through the headstand? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you do, since, since you've you know, helped us with this, we have a few minutes more. Why don't you take us through a couple of stretches? We'll continue. Okay, yeah? sure. Do a few. For yeah. me to take us. Okay, Absolutely, great. yeah. Okay, yeah. Move the chair. Yes, let's do it. We have about three and a half to four minutes. We could get in about three or four postures. Okay, great. So, do you feel comfortable on a standing, or would you want to do this from a chair? Because we might bend forward, and it might feel more comfortable if you did it from a chair. Just more Let me steady. Keep this close to you, just in case you want to use it. Okay. I'll keep it close. And I'll try it without. Yeah, try okay, it without. Sure. And if you want to use it instead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's just start standing with the feet about hip width apart and have your hands resting, palms together in the center of the chest. And just begin by tuning into your breath. So just take a moment to just pay attention to your breathing without even trying to change it. You're just now changing your focus to focus on your breath. And usually, by simply shifting your focus to your breath, it already begins to change and becomes deeper and more relaxed already, and that's perfectly fine without even trying. But now I want you to consciously begin to deepen your breathing. So inhale more than you had been. And exhale more fully than you even thought was possible. And taking one more breath like that. And exhale. And on this next inhale, as you inhale, just imagine yourself becoming taller from your tailbone up through the crown of your head. Imagine what it would be like to have a string at the top of your head lifting you up as if you were a puppet and someone just lifted you up and all this space was created in your spine. And as you exhale, feel your whole body relaxing into this new feeling of being upright. And then you can open your eyes when you're ready. And we'll begin with the first stretch. So I want you to inhale and take your arms up the sides of your body, opening your chest, opening your throat. And if it's comfortable letting the palms touch, you can always relax the elbows. You don't need to keep the elbows straight. And then exhaling, bend your knees so you soften the knees to release your spine. And just come forward and dangle down here. Inhale, turn the palms to face the ceiling and come up, sweeping the arms up the sides of the body, opening your ribs, opening your chest, opening your throat, letting the palms touch and exhale, bring the palms down the center of your body, feeling yourself becoming aligned from the right side and the left side, the front and the back as you bring the arms down the middle. Good. And we'll continue that a few more times. Inhale. Sweeping the arms up the sides, opening the chest, the throat, opening the space between the eyebrows, opening the crown of the head. Exhale, folding forward, folding at the waist, softening the knees so the spine releases down. You can touch the ground if you can. Inhale, sweep the arms back up the sides. And here you can imagine yourself just taking in 